So what I'll do is I'll do a bit of a background about OpenEye just to get the um, idea of what it is and what it does, um, take you through some of the functions that you might use it for in an outpatient clinic, and then do some demos of Surgical Pathway. If we've got half an hour, I'll, I'll try and skip through some stuff um, and just give it a fairly high level overview. But there's tons and tons of things to um, to talk about if there's more time. And I think as, as time goes on, you might want to have specific demos of some of the uh, different subspecialist areas within, within Open Eyes, and, and that can be arranged, I'm sure. Uh, so, you know, you know, we're all ophthalmologists or work in the, work in the eye department, um, but it's important to understand where where ophthalmology sits in the in the hospital. Um, sometimes we're not aware of where we sit amongst other places, and probably more often the other departments aren't fully aware of the differences within ophthalmology and why we might benefit from having things different to the rest of the hospital. So we we have more outpatient attendances than than anywhere else in the hospital. Um, cataract surgery is the most frequently performed operation. Um, there's half a million um, done per year. Um, and in on top of that, there's complexities around risk of operations, doing the wrong eye, doing the wrong lens implant. And you know, technology can be used to try and improve safety across that. And, you know, having bespoke software for ophthalmology does a far better job than, than, than most of the generic systems I've ever seen. And we have lots of procedures that we do in clinic even. So intravitreal procedures, injections, minor operations, and again, there are issues around laterality, drugs injected, all high risk, especially when you're going at a high pace. Uh, and unsurprisingly, we have more never events than any other specialty, partly because of the volumes there, but and because of the reasons I've said as well. Uh, and and we, we looked at some data that I presented actually at a conference last year in Australia about how implementing open eyes at, at our service at least had led to reduction in some of the serious adverse events in the surgical pathway. So that there, it, it's obvious and there's some data around it, but you know it, it does help uh, improve um, and safety net things. And the other main difference is we're heavily reliant on imaging and investigations, but compared to the rest of the hospital, ours are very much just within our eye service. We're not so reliant on blood tests or imaging like the rest of the hospital. And equally, none of the rest of the hospital is so interested in our investigations and imaging that we use. So it does lead all towards having a separate system for ophthalmology if it does a better job than, than the generic systems. And as a as an inpatient, busy um, ophthalmologist, when I think about an ophthalmic EPR, the things that I really want about uh, want it to do for me, number one, it has to be fast. And then I'm basically using it for two things. Firstly, to get data out. So when I'm seeing a patient, I want to see what has happened in the past, um, their referral letters, their previous investigations, their imaging. So I want to get the, the data out quickly to review it. And then I want to put data in very quickly from when I've examined them to, to get that recorded, to get the operation bookings, consent forms, letters all done as quickly as possible to maximise the time I can spend speaking to people or seeing more patients. Um, and then on top of that, you know, it has to be versatile. We we change the way we work quite frequently. There's been a big change um, uh, before COVID and also after COVID with virtual um, reviews, different types of clinic setups, community setups. So the software needs to be adaptable to, to help us do that. Um, it needs to be user friendly. Um, it's not just tech enthusiasts that want to be using it. It's a whole range of staff who work in the department and uh, that's important. And then lastly, it needs to be graphical. People who write in notes have always been used to drawing uh, what they see. You know, we're doing eyes, there's lots of stuff to draw and having a visual representation of that is very useful um, compared to a text description. And with using these systems more and more, you, you kind of understand how that is very important. And then we also wanna be having integrations with the devices we use to do our investigations. So Open Eyes is a web-based electronic medical record system um, for, for ophthalmology. It's been developed from a range of hospitals, originally from Moorfields, um, and then for over a decade now, it's been used in, in various other places. And gradually over time, more and more features have been added to it. More and more uh, evolutions of the original features have been um, added and developed. Uh, and this has come through charitable funding, funding from the hospitals that use it, grants from different digital innovations. Um, so it's not for profit and the software is available open source, free of charge. And the whole um, Open Eyes Foundation is managed by the Aperta Foundation, which is another not for profit um, organisation who look after several um, open source software health related uh, projects.
and and they ensure that you know all the governance is done and that open eyes will always be available it's just because it's you know it's free and and, and open source is never going to disappear there's um, money behind it to ensure that and there's plenty of governance and, and checks around that and then you know although i've said it's free free for use and and downloaded that's how it's been used in uh, developing countries and in other other locations, but within the NHS and certainly within um, most of the places in the UK, it's done through the professional services partners like Opus and Toucan Labs, who are accredited by the Aperta Foundation to implement Open Eyes for hospitals. Um, so they they have the uh, um, a, appropriate skill set and experience in order to uh, install Open Eyes and then support hospitals and users. Um, across the time that it's it's being used, because it's not just a one-off installation. There's ongoing requirements for um, maintenance, bug fixes, problems that arise with any kind of software in a, in a hospital setting, and you need a responsive team to help you do that. So it's definitely not recommended to do it through p uh, people who aren't accredited by by the Aperta Foundation. And so then the Open Eyes Foundation has a number of um, people on the committee who help steer the direction of it. The, the, probably the two longer serving important people are um, David Hader and James Morgan. James Morgan was the previous chair and David Hader is the current chair, both ophthalmologists working in the UK. Um, so they're the board of trustees and then underneath that sits the design authority. So every uh, trust who uses Open Eyes has one nominated person who's interested in it, who sits on the design authority and they are the people who then uh, go through all the new requests for developments of the software and help refine them and, and take them through to being added to the program and then on top of that there are subspecialty groups so depending on what is being developed a few years ago there was a big module added for strabismus so there were lots of orthoptists optometrists and um, squint um, surgeons who were part of the group who helped design and and, and get that part of the open eye software developed and then on top of that, all, all users of Open Eyes can also participate and, and add feedback and, and help shape the, the, the future versions of Open Eyes. And then these developments are done by, again, partners of, of um, Open Eyes who are used to doing the software development and ABHR, Toucan Labs, CAMS, which is in Cambridge, uh, are companies in the UK who have done most of the development of Open Eyes so far. In terms of where it's used, there's about a dozen trusts already in the in the in the in England who use it. It's probably about another half a dozen who have signed contracts to take open eyes. Quite a few of them are migrating from Medisoft because Medisoft has become end of life and they went through a procurement and decision process and then decided to migrate their data into open eyes. So on top of these, there are several other trusts that are doing that. The uh, biggest user is Moorfields. They for a while were using a slightly different version of an open eyes, but for the last year or so they have joined the same version that everyone else has been using. And that's that's been very helpful in helping um, things move along. On top of the, the English NHS Trust, all of Wales, Wales have uh, decided to use Open Eyes as a single um, software solution for eyes in across the whole of Wales. And that's gradually being rolled out. And similarly in Scotland, um, they are using it and it's live now in a few of the health boards. And the plan is to take it across the whole country so that patients who are seen in any part of Wales or Scotland, their records can be accessed um, via open eyes wherever, they, wherever they're being seen. Uh, on top of that, there are a couple of uh, independent organisations that do eyes within England, Optegra and Numerica that, that are using open eyes. And then internationally, there are lots of places, but um, the longest serving places are Centre for Eye Research in Australia and then a charitable organisation in, in the South Pacific called the Fred Hollows Foundation. Um, just to explain how Open Eyes fits in amongst other um, software and programs in the hospital. So um, everywhere that uses it in a in a big setting like a hospital will usually have a PAS, so a patient administration system, which is what is used across the whole hospital for having all the patient demographics, getting in the referrals, booking the appointments. So that's the, the system that sits on top and it communicates with Open Eyes and sends information through about the patient details, appointments into Open Eyes. Um, and then separate to that, you you often, um, and it's recommended probably to have an ophthalmic imaging platform, such as Size Forum, or there are other manufacturers. And they basically are the equivalent of what radiology would use for storing all their radiology investigations, all the MRI scans and x-rays. They, they take in all the imaging from the different devices, store them on there, and then you can configure what you want sent into open eyes. So you can have all your visual fields come into open eyes, 
um, or um, or stay within the, the the PAC system. And similarly with OCTs, you can have reports sent into OpenEyes, um, but keep the full OCT scan to be reviewed on its own software, which is usually the desirable way of doing it. Uh, and then as a clinician, most nearly all your time is, is spent using open eyes. That's where you see everything. You don't have to look at the other systems because all the appointments for the patient, all their information and all the reports for the investigations uh, are sent into open eyes, depending on how you want it set up. Uh, and just to then run through the, the key fe features before I go into showing you some of the demo uh, in, in terms of outpatients. We've got tons of different examination um, templates that you can configure. So for every different subspecialty, you can configure different types of examination templates, um, or you can have very generic ones that you change as you go along. Um, they're very good summary views for uh, patients to summarize their uh, vision of visual acuity trends or intraocular pressure trends. You can create letters automatically from um, your examination, so you don't have to type anything or dictate anything. It can do prescriptions, um, CVI registrations, um, even PROMs like the CAP PROM. And there's a portal for capturing post-op reviews from community optometrists. Uh, in terms of interventional pathways, so we we do all of our surgical bookings and theatre diaries and scheduling via open eyes. So we have our theatre diaries uh, within open eyes. We book the op operation on there. The admin team schedule it through um, the, the open eyes part of booking system. When we when we perform surgery, we open up a whiteboard view, which I'll show you, which brings up all the lens choices um, and the surgical plan. Op notes are done on there. Um, and all the consent forms are done through there. So it's quite an efficient system for getting it all together. Um, and then it, because of all that on one system, you have quite good audit data as well that you can pull out. And then it's it's very good at uh, to being used for virtual clinics where you can have lists of patients that are seen at one point with investigations collected and then um, in safely stored for review at a later date by clinicians and, and it can be all fully audited. I've mentioned about device integration, so um, all our biometry is automatically sent from the device into open eyes, all our visual fields are, and then we select which reports from the OCTs we want. Fine. Uh, and then to just to sort of summarise, the, the main things I would say that, uh, that are good about, very good about open eyes is that it's fast. If it's set up properly, it definitely is fast. It shouldn't be slow. Um, it's very powerful, but, but still user friendly. It, because it's web-based, it can be used on any device. So you can use it um, on laptops, obviously, or computers, but you can also use it on tablets and phones, so depending on how it's set up. In Scotland, because it's set up on a um, public web system where you have two-factor authentication to log in, the clinicians can actually use it from their personal devices and access the full software um, if it's done appropriately. And then it has more features, I think, than any other ophthalmic system. So there's stuff that a lot of other software forgets about like strabismus and oculoplastics because it's a bit more difficult to do but there are full modules for strabismus and a lot of stuff for oculoplastics with more to come in in the next year it's, it's really highly configurable you know places like moorfields big trust that has very special needs across different places they have um, designed it to suit them and that means if it suits them across their sites it can pretty much suit most places and as i said it's highly graphical and that's important to us and, and very interoperable. So I think we can maybe have questions about specifics about this later, but any any PAS system, any um, patient administrator system that uses HL7 messaging can connect to OpenEyes um, and send information about appointments and patient details uh, to OpenEyes. And then any DICOM compatible device can do the same for imaging. And because there's been several trusts now that are moved from Medisoft to OpenEyes, there's a, um, a, a very good data migration set up where data can be can be migrated out from Metasoft into OpenEyes. And just to take you through how, how we implemented it, we did it quite slowly over a, a fairly long time compared to probably what's done now. We went one service at a time. So we originally started at a cataract service, got that up and running, got people used to using it, and then gradually rolled it out across the different um, uh, departments within the eye service. And similarly with our surgical pathway, we started it initially for doing pre-assessments, then we did our op bookings, then we moved um, all our theatre diaries onto it and uh, eventually got rid of all our paper consent forms and did, and did all our consent forms on open eyes. Great, I'm going to go into a demo. Are there any burning questions at this point before I do that? 
silence is golden though so please carry on great so when you when you um can you see the open eyes uh program now i've just switched tabs yeah yep. can see that Ian. Great. thanks uh so when you when you start off uh there's a, a login screen it's just a web address that you would have bookmarked or or, or uh, an icon that will take you to it when Ian, you log in Ian, can i just stop you there could you uh increase the size of your screen because it's quite hard to see it so if you can zoom in a bit um that make it easier for people to see how's, how's that now is that easier to see yeah okay we'll, we'll go with that thank you it, yeah so it, you, you know you normally would have this on a on a on a, a workstation screen so you would see a lot more than this I've, I've increased it which is quite nice you can do that uh, it will look a little bit different to normal so so when you log in there is a, a messaging system which people can use to send messages between different users about patients so it's, a, it's one way of communicating about patients um, there is the thing that you spend most of the time looking at is the clinic list so this is fed in from the hospital system and sends through, uh, depending on how you set it up, it will spit it according to different specialties and, and different clinics. And you'd be able to separate the, the clinics according to date, morning, afternoon. You could, you could look ahead in time or back in time to see any clinic list. And then for each patient, these are all made up patients, you can set a plan for what you want them to have done in clinic, um, either when they arrive at their last appointment or in bulk, you can select a whole group of patients and then add different tasks to them. So if you wanted all of the cataract patients to have biometry, you click on that and then add it on. It's already been added on before, but it's, it's, it's doubled on now at the end. And you can do the same for administrating dilating drops. You can have, uh, we'll select a patient here, um, add a drug administration request and a standard dilation and add it to patients. You could do the same thing for um, uh, specific requests for dilation before surgery. Anything can be configured and you can select it and add it to one or all patients. So this is a relatively new thing that's been added to Open Eyes and it allows you to work without paper because you can track on here where the patient is, where they are on their journey, where, where, what tests they're having done now and what are they waiting to have done. And then when you want to look into a patient, you would just click onto their name and then it will load you into their record. And you arrive on a patient home screen. I'll just kind of take you through it. At the top, you have the patient's name, their ID number, and then their NHS number and, and age. At the top here, you have really useful summaries of the patient that you can hover over and it brings up more information. So this is red because they've got an allergy when you hover over here it will tell you they're allergic to pollen usually you'd want the drug allergies in there if there are any special alerts as well it will come up in there like um, visual impairment um, if they're having surgery things around blood thinners or alpha agonists the next one brings up information about their demographics um, and gp details and then um, you can have a summary here of their previous appointments each clinic that they've been seen in previously will have a the last plan listed here so you can have a quick overview of that and then this is probably the most useful one here which tells you their most recent visual acuity most recent refraction most recent cct cbi status and then what active diagnoses they have what procedures they've had in their past what medications they're using including what they've had in the past and then the other summaries about family history social history and then systemic diagnosis procedures and medication so it's a really easy way of checking what's happening to a patient without having to even open anything uh, down this left hand side you have um, it's called the event list basically each time a patient has anything done to them a new row is added on this list and the icon will basically correspond to what that is. So this is a visual field icon. You can just hover over it and it brings up a, a quite nicely sized preview of what that event is. So you don't even have to click on it to, to leave what you're doing. You can view this at any time. And it's things like this that make it a lot more usable. You, you know, you, it's like flicking through pages on a piece of pa on a paper notes rather than clicking something, waiting 20 seconds for it to load, finding out it's the wrong thing, clicking on something else. You basically spend a long time navigating around other systems trying to find something uh, because it has these shortcuts you can do a lot without having to even leave what you're doing and because it's a web browser you can actually open up 
these different things in multiple tabs as well if you want to do that and have these um, uh, running at the same time. You can have it across multiple screens and have different views depending on how sophisticated you want to run it. Um, and then there are these really good summary graphs of trends for depending on what you're looking at. This is a glaucoma patient. So when you click on the glaucoma trend, it will bring up uh, an IOP trend here and a visual acuity trend and also a VFI trend. So the visual field index is plotted in here. And it indicates in blue writing here what procedures they've had done. If you want to look at something in more detail, you can hover over it and it will, um, it will zoom into that bit. Let me do that again. And it will tell and you'll be able to look at it. I'm not sure why it's not doing it. But you, you normally when you click onto this, it will zoom into it and it will show you what's happened there in more in more detail. On the top, you have an overlay of what medications they're using at the different points in time. So it's a really good summary of the patient record and it will oh it's not zooming in because I'm on, I've, I've increased my font uh, font size on here. But yeah, you have a basically really nice summary that you would use for reviewing a patient. Um, particularly in a virtual clinic, this is really helpful. It gives you a good background, it tells you at the top here what their CCT is, what their base pressure is, what the maximum pressure is. And there are similar um, summary views for medical retina patients as well, where you have um, the central retinal thickness plotted, their visual acuity in whatever format you want plotted. So the, uh, it's, a, it's a really easy way of understanding what's happened to the patient in the past. If I go back to the record, when you want to go into um, a patient to add data, um, the thing you most commonly do is uh, record a new examination. And you can basically have different, uh, let me do a catch up one actually. You can have different templates set up for different services. So they can be completely different and customizable and allow you to basically specify what tests or examinations you want done for each part of the patient's pathway. So here we've got um, a cataract pathway, which is split up into the patient seeing a nurse, having some tests done, and then going to see a doctor. So you can specify here that you want them to have a history and all these different things, allergy, surgical history, medications, um, and, and guide the person or the user to, to record what you want. But you can also add different things in. So the, these are all the different examination bits that you can record in a structured way. I'm not sure if you can see all of that, but there's it's about 60, 70 different things. The bits that are green and highlighted are already opened. But if you want to record something extra, um, like color vision, you would click on it and it would open up the structured field for recording color vision. And, and, and it's the same for all the different things. So the, 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 the workflows are very structured and very configurable to, depending on how you want it set up. And it works really well for multidisciplinary team where you want a certain person to do certain tests, save what they've done, and then the patient moves on to another person to do different tests. That, that's how it works in our in our service and it works well. I'll just move back onto the presentation because it might be easier to get through some stuff quicker on here. Um, so we, we have our visual acuity tested on a system called Complog, which is a digital visual acuity system, um, and that's integrated into OpenEye. So basically once the patient goes through the visual acuity testing, you click a button on here that pulls in the, the visual acuity straight into the record and it and it's saved in there. And there are lots of little integrations like this that can be done. And we worked out that just for our department, that would save about a million clicks a year by pulling that data in rather than having to click through the visual acuity for each eye, the pinhole visual acuity and things like that. Um, the data is normally entered via these little pop-ups that come up when you click on the green button. And that basically hides away some of the stuff from the screen so it's not super busy. Um, rather than having all these drop down menus, all of these are tucked away and you, you interact with it when you need to use it and record the information very fast and in a structured way. So all the different blocks of examination have similar things like this. I've just showed you here how family history and social history can be recorded very quickly. Um, there are also lots of shortcuts that reduce the need for typing. So in the in the boxes, you can type free text, that's fine. But you can also set up lots of phrases in these pop ups that allow you to build your paragraphs without you having to type anything. And if you, you can set these up how you like. They can be different for cataract compared to glaucoma, compared to strabismus. So that just reduces down how much typing you need to do. You can also dictate directly into there using Dragon Dictate or even other software. You can di dictate straight into the into the text boxes if you prefer. So it's it can be used however however you like. 
Um, and then there's a lot of graphical input. So uh, if I if I show you on here, if you're if you're looking at the front of the eye and you want to record um, someone who's having cataract surgery, or this this patient's had cataract surgery, you can interact with these drawings. You can move the lens down to show that it's dis displaced. It will update the report automatically. You can add other features um, of the eye, and these are all uh, graphical things that you can move around. And and it's a great way of just showing the next user what you've seen without you having to write tons of words. And, and when you're reviewing lots of patients quickly, this is really helpful. Um, there are lots of these diagrams for different things. You've got a similar one for the retina, for the optic discs. Um, I won't show you all of that, but you get the idea. Um, and it's also possible to control the data. So you can, you can specify, for instance, if you want someone to record allergies, you can ask them forced questions around things like, do they actually have a penicillin allergy? And rather than just saying, do they have an allergy? They actually have to say yes, no for specific things. Um, you can ask um, similar things around diagnoses and specify that there are certain things you definitely want forced questions on rather than just leaving it as, a, um, as an open question, you can do that. Um, and similarly around risk, you can ask specific things around pregnancy and the system's smart. So you can apply a question about pregnancy just to women of a certain age range. So it won't you won't be asking that to an 85 year old man. Um, so it, it, it helps make things uh, more efficient. And then you can force users to record certain bits of data. So for a follow up, for instance, you can make it um, essential for them to record it before they save the record. Um, and you can do that to every single element or not. So some of them, like like this year, have got the bin icon available. So if, if the user doesn't want to record it at that point, they can remove that block of examination and move on. But you can also disable that option so that they have to record it if you want certain things recorded. So in our eye casualty, for instance, every patient has to have an allergy status, every patient has to have a diagnosis, and every patient has to have a follow-up plan. The, the user can't save their record until that's done. And that just helps ensure some data quality. I've shown you this. Uh, and then the other thing that's quite useful is, depending on what software you use, so we, we've got our imaging on Zeiss Forum, which I think is a really good system. It's great for looking for glaucoma at visual fields and it integrates with open eyes really well and with the hospital system so our clinic lists are pushed from the hospital system into open eyes but also into zeiss forum and then from there into the devices so when a patient arrives for the cataract clinic when they go to have their biometry done the device yeah. already has all their demographics and details on there so rather than a technician having to type all this on some really small keyboard or some awful touch screen the patient's details are all there, everything's correct, they just have to select the correct patient. And that means once the biometry is done, it can be pushed into the correct record in open eyes and eliminates one other potential risk around wrong patient data. Um, and like I mentioned, it's quite good for, for developing virtual clinics. You can have different lists of patients and have them at different stages. So once a patient's been assessed, they can be put in for a list awaiting review and that gets tracked along depending where they are on the pathway. Um, the, the dashboard can be configured to show how high risk the patient is. So the, the red ones can be prioritised before others. You can summarise some of the info in here and create notes that you want to give to the person who's reviewing the patient next. So it's a nice way of, of doing virtual clinics. And we've got loads of virtual clinics that we've set up um, to help do that. And I'll skip this here. So. I mentioned about prescribing. It was a little bit of a battle to get our uh, pharmacy to agree to it because it's a different thing when you know everyone else was using paper prescriptions. But actually, having done it, they they are extremely pleased. You know, we we are one of the highest volume of prescribers. None of us can write that clearly. There was a very poor audit trail around um, what we were prescribing, but having a digital system has actually changed that completely. They can look at exactly what our prescribing trends are. They have a live formulary on open eyes. So if something goes out of stock, they can deactivate it from our prescribing list straight away. And so we can't prescribe it that day until it comes back in and it saves the patient having to go back and forth to pharmacy and say, oh, this is out of stock. Can you prescribe something else? Um, and there are great shortcuts that we can do for pre prescription sets. So um, things around like post post surgery, you can configure lots of complex post op regimes that you can add to a patient's record with just a few clicks. So you can have antibiotics, steroids, Dymox tablets um, added to a patient quite easily. 
you can add any other drops in addition to it. Um, it's all quite easy to use um, and all quite quick. You can separate it out into different classes of drugs and add that in. And then the great thing is that once this is done, it's part of the patient's record. So when you come to creating a letter, that's part that's there. You don't have to do any of that again. Um, the letters are automatically generated. We tend to print it off and give it to the patient directly. We have it set up so that they are emailed the next day to the GP if they have that set, if the GP has it set up. And we've got lots of different templates for different services. So even within the glaucoma clinic, we've got more detailed letters for new appointments and much less detailed ones for follow-up appointments. And this is an uh, example of what our letters look like. You can decide what information goes in there, but you know things like visual acuity, medications, allergies, um, are standard things we put in there, um, and then the plan as well. Plus, you can always edit it and add information as you go along, and it's quite an uh, easy thing to do. Uh, and then it allows you to have really good service level analytics. Because you're putting in things about follow-up plans, you can track overdue follow-ups. So this is a graph showing um, overdue follow-ups. You can then click onto a um, certain bar. So this bar is patients who are, these four patients are 61 weeks overdue the follow-up. They were seen 61 weeks ago and um, their plan was to be seen 61 weeks ago and they haven't been seen. So you can use this as a, as a way of finding patients who have gone lo got lost. And there are similar things for um, waiting lists for new patients um, and then some clinical analytics as well, where you can find specific diagnoses very easy, which is great for doing audits and, and research things. Um, you can also use it for some uh, basic uh, trend analysis for things like medical retina. You can look at outcomes of visual acuity for different drugs, different um, diagnoses, uh, different treatment regimes, and that's all quite easy to do. Uh, and as I mentioned, there's a there's a kind of deep structured data migration for MediSoft to OpenEyes, where they, they've done a really good job of actually extracting pretty much all the data from OpenEyes into uh, from MediSoft into OpenEyes. So it looks like the data is um, in OpenEyes because it's being pulled in from uh, MediSoft, and it's 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 part of all the same uh, patient record within OpenEyes. Uh, and then uh, I think the last thing I'll go through just in the last five minutes is uh, a quick example of a surgical pathway. So you would have a structured examination and then you would go through to booking the patient and doing the op note. So this is a video, I'll take you through it. So you would have a patient list, um, set the things you want done. Uh, the patient here has already seen the nurse, they've already had biometry. And so we're clicking on the doctor section now. When you go into it, it will show you what the nurse has already recorded. Oh. Uh, and then you can review it, um, including all the different alerts, and then move on to the section for the doctor. When th this happens, you now have all the different bits for the doctor to examine. So we're putting in a eye well in the right eye, renescent cataract in the left eye with some phacodinesis. All this gets uh, added to the diagnosis list. There's an epileptic membrane here. So all of these diagnoses have been added automatically. You can create the surgical um, plan for the cataract operation. And then the information from before is pulled into the PCR risk. So that's automatically calculated to show that this is a, a high risk cataract um, and so should be booked accordingly. Um, after that, you can go into operation booking. So this is where you choose the procedure. You can have a quick list of common procedures. It um, will automatically um, assign a time slot for the operation. But here we've given it a high complexity and it's increased the time accordingly to what we've set up. Um, you can choose the anaesthetic details um, and any pre-assessment information and then decide to schedule it now um, or, or put it onto a partial booking waiting list where the admin team can then schedule it accordingly. They can go through the list, look at the information, and then put it onto an appropriate operating list. Um, once you've created the operation booking, you can do the consent form fairly easily because the information, sorry. So once you've, once you've entered the data once, the idea is that it's used um, later again, you don't have to duplicate things. So the information from the operation booking now is ready to be used to create a consent form. So the same procedure information and anaesthetic information can be used to create the consent form. 
Um, there are default risks and benefits that are automatically assigned for each procedure. You can customize it and add additional stuff. Um, and then you can have a digital signature captured directly within OpenEyes, um, either using the same device or you can link a iPad or a phone to it and then capture the patient's con um, consent form signature. Uh, then the biometry will come in from um, your IWL master and then you can review it with an open eyes to choose the lens. So whatever IOL formula have been exported from the IOL master will be available to use for whatever lens is. And you can then choose the lens um, and save it so that it's ready for when you come into theatre. Information like their target refraction and refraction are all pulled through from the system. And then when you come to the day of surgery, you have theatre diaries, you have a list of patients on there. You can review what's on your list very quickly by just hover over in, hovering over one of these icons. It brings up a preview with all the kind of key information about their background for you to review. It's a really quick way of reviewing the lists. Um, you can also hover over the biometry from the theatre diary to look at their axial lengths and anything special on there. Then there are direct links to the op booking and also the consent form will appear on there now. And then when you're ready to do surgery, you click on this whiteboard icon and it will load a big screen um, whiteboard view, or it's a blackboard in this case, of the, the surgical plan. So you have the patient's details here, what procedure they're having, um, what anesthesia, and then the key things around the IOL, IOL choice, um, what formula, what the predicted outcome is, and an access diagram to help you uh, plan your surgery. If there are any allergies, these are shown on here. Any risks around anticoagulants or anything else that's in the system will appear on here. So it's a really good way of, of um, seeing the information during surgery. We have it set up so that there's a dual screen. You've got a laptop and a slightly larger screen above it. So we can see this quite easily from when we're sat at the patient's side doing the surgery. Um, within, within this whiteboard view, you also have access to the biometry. So if you need to see it to change the lens, you can do that. You can also pull up the consent form, but there, there's a full PDF view of the biometry just within this whiteboard view. So if you need to switch to a different lens, you can do that. And then the last thing you would do is do the op note. And again, the information is pulled through. You don't have to enter the procedure or the anaesthetic. Most of it is um, preset. Um, you can add things, um, add about complications. The PCR risk is pulled through from before. Um, and then you can um, complete your op note. It will allow you to generate a letter to the GP straight away. It will allow you to generate uh, one to the optom as well and a prescription depending on what you set up. You can have different post-op prescriptions that you can select. And when you click save, it will generate all of that from you uh, without you having to do anything else. So you don't have to do a separate letter. There'll be a standard discharge letter that you can configure to do. Um, and then the, uh, really the final thing is with all of this information, you get good data for um, analytics. This is uh, the PCR rate of our surgeons. You can see that at any point if you're an admin user or you can see your own results at any, at any point if you're just a normal user and it, it will adjust it according to the complexity of your surgery and show if you're an outlier and it's great for just doing audits. Um, similarly, you can look at complications. You can click on any of these bars and it will take you through with the information. You can have visual acuity outcomes, refractive outcomes, um, and all this information is is easily to easily exportable to the nod audit. I think I'll stop there because it's three o'clock. We've done more than half an hour. Um, yes. So, right. having yes, to take questions, got to just th thank all the people who've been involved with Open Eyes a lot longer than me because uh, they've really done fantastic work, and the people still involved with, with developing it now as well. Thank you, Ian. That's really good. Um, let me just check time check how long have we got? Yeah. Um, 15 minutes. Right, OK, so we have 15 minutes for questions. We've had quite a few questions from the online um, people, so I'll run through some of those questions. But to, and I know I appreciate you have had to listen very hard uh, for Ian's benefit. You were on a laptop speaker here, so the so people in the room have had to listen very carefully to you. Um, are there any questions here? Is there things that people would like to see or explore? Yes. Optometry. Yeah, the refraction. Right, okay, Ian. Yeah. So uh, optometry refraction. And would you like to just show them exactly what you'd like to see? Um, um, just, um, uh, yeah, the refraction clinic for um, 
Where's, well, is there a separate module? Is there a separate screen? Is it integrated into a portfolio? Yeah, so, I mean, just to be clear, the, the, the module concept is a little bit false because basically everything is available for every examination. When you click on here, these are all the different examination bits that you can add to an examination. The, the modules are basically just pre, uh, just set up in advance so that if you are in a glaucoma clinic, the more appropriate bits are already open for you. But you can add, for instance, retinoscopy or, or refraction to any examination um, so that you have options to input um, the refraction here and then the retinoscopy findings on here. So this is a diagram where you can interact with and, and add the information on here. Um, and then on top of that, you have separate things around um, orthoptic testing um, and prescribing functions for glasses. Okay. Um, any other questions in the room here? Anything you want to say? So, please. Hi, Ian. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, does uh, perform things that Metasoft used to in terms of, say, glaucoma progression on the visual fields and integrate sort of nice calculators and uh, glaucoma risk? Uh, yeah, so I can, I can. I'm a glaucoma specialist. I never use those nice cal those um, OHD calculators. They're a little bit, uh, you know. I, don't, I mean, the, the nice guidelines are fairly clear now without needing that. So that so we don't have that. There was someone who requested to add that to Open Eyes, but we we reviewed it and we thought it's probably not. It's probably outdated. So we haven't got that and added that in. Um, the 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 visual fields um, at the moment um, are viewed without a progression trend. There is a plan to develop that feature. It's not available yet. Um, I in, in St. Thomas's, I use Zeiss Forum alongside Open Eyes for the glaucoma service. So we have all our visual fields in both, but I use Zeiss Forum for the visual fields because it's got much better um, progression analysis and, and it's a lot, you know, it's a proper system for viewing imaging. Um, Open Eyes is the system for recording examinations and doing all of the rest of it. But, you know, like, uh, like the radiologists have separate systems for imaging, I think it's quite important to do that for ophthalmology as well. If you've got a big unit and and you know a, a busy service, the the ophthalmic pack systems do a much better job than the EPRs. Uh, but you have the visual field reports still available in Open Eyes. You have trends for the VFI, the visual field index, or the mean deviation within the plot, so you can do it like that. But I I definitely recommend having um, Zeiss Forum if you've got a busy glaucoma service. And I've got no, nothing at all financially linked to Zeiss. And uh, you mentioned that, so this browser based. So if you want to say, give access to community optometrists, if the service reconfigures, yep. or you want yep. to sort of request other hospital trust software, yep. is that quite straightforward to do? Uh, it's all around, in terms of technically, absolutely no problem at all. Um, in terms of hospital governance, it's hospital governance. So uh, in Scotland, where they, they are actually quite progressive and their, their, their eye services are quite different, where they have a much more integrated system with their optometrists doing a fair bit of, of, of clinical work as well, They're, they have open eyes hosted on a public web server. So much like your banking, you, you type a website that's a public website have strong security to access it, but that means it's available anywhere on any device anywhere in the world if you if you pass through the security. Most places in England, in the English NHS, have it within a hospital intranet um, secure firewall. So only devices that are within the hospital trust network can access it. But that's a decision locally how you want to configure it. Um, if, if, if that's what we have, unfortunately, but it, it does restrict it, it means only people who have uh, a VPN or a trust laptop or device on the hospital network can access it. But in Scotland, it's completely different. Yeah, I mean, one of the visions that we had here was to try to integrate all of our APR. So I, I noticed Sandwell's on the call as well. Um, so some of the, so we do send some acute referrals yeah. there and they see some of our so, patients. Yeah, so one thing I haven't even had a time to talk about is there is a facility within Open Eyes to have multi-tenancy, which basically means you can have several trusts sharing effectively one system. So when I, if I show you on, on here, when you log in on this demo site, it has 
a couple of different hospital trusts that are, are part of the same system. So you might work at two different hospitals and you'd have a different login for each because they're separate trusts, but you can log in and see the same patient record. Um, so that's what's being used. That's how Moorfields use it. That's um, how East Kent use it because they share across East Kent and Tunbridge Wells, which are two separate trusts, but they have the same record. So effectively, you have one patient record across as many trusts as you want set up, um, which is a great way because that means, yeah, if you've got lots of local trusts that share patients and, and do different subspecialist services, it works really well. You don't have separate records. And just the final point is we've we've had Medisoft for quite some time, and I think one of the fears that have been sort of expressed to me is when you sign up with a, a EPR company, um, there's lots of promises that, yes, it's updated, it will change, it will adapt, because obviously services change, the way staff deliver yeah. care changes. So one of those fears is, well, as soon as we sign up, and let's say if members of staff perform service differently, well, that's be responsive to to the needs of what the clinical service is yeah well i think you know it, it is the most configurable thing that you can have really because everything is 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 really configurable you can set up the, the examination templates the booking theater lists um it's it, it is highly flexible and it has to be because it's used in you know across entire countries um, in the private sector in small institutions so it you know it, it it can be used across whatever really um and in terms of new features because it is a website effectively it's a lot easier to uh, adapt the software and add new versions so to give you an example st thomas's are a fair bit behind in terms of what version they're on mainly or, or entirely because of internal issues nothing to do with open eyes but there's a new version of open eyes that's released on a regular basis we're on version three point something and the latest version is six point something so there are lots of new versions that come out um and with new features uh, and they're coming out at a really fast rate because you've got more and more users who want new features and pay for it to be developed and the, the great thing is if someone pays for it um at any part of the world it's available for all users for free you don't have to pay for it again um the the rate limiting step is is mainly at the moment having enough capacity for it to all be done safely and without making the system unusable so it's kind of bottleneck there but if, if there's funding available for stuff it gets done and it gets added in for everyone so, so you know in terms of yeah flexibility i don't see that as an issue at all because it's it's constantly updating um, and if there's anything that big that needs to change it can be changed Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, do you have any other questions in the room? Okay, so I'll run through some of the questions that were asked uh, online. There's a question about is it on the, in the cloud or is it locally? You can have this installed locally or you can have it on the cloud, uh, depending on what you need, depends on your configuration. Um, and the required computing requirements are not too significant. They're standard, standard uh, cloud type of uh, computing arrangements. Uh, there was questions around interfacing with other systems, such as uh, Lorenzo and Cerna for demographics, ADT. Ian, is that something you can pick up? You know, so the you know Cerna is, is used across a number of places that have open eyes and and, and it integrates with it absolutely fine. And, it, and Lorenzo, anything any system that uses HL7 messaging will connect to it um, and send over things like the patient appointment details and demographics, GP details that kind of stuff. Um, that's pretty straightforward. Thank you. And what about outputs? So for example, clinical discharge letters, DocMan? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so uh, we have DocMan as well, I think. Uh, so when we do a letter, we save it and it gets um, merged into the main hospital system overnight and gets emailed to the GP overnight. So our clinic letters are available to the whole hospital Okay, thank you. And there was a question about risk stratification as published by RCO. Did you want to clarify your question? Earlier? Yeah, so I saw on virtual clinic, uh, you can put sort of, you know, low uh, low risk, medium risk and high risk when it comes to sort of, say, glaucoma or re retinal, whichever speciality you're talking about. Yeah, for glaucoma. yeah. Um, so looking at sort of, say, the GlaucFAS um, uh, sort of triage, is that possible on this system yeah well the, yeah it, i mean you know you don't need to have that so that the the system still comes out into different categories so um when you 
when you see a patient, let me just quickly uh, show you. When you see a patient and decide their follow-up plan, um, you can decide their risk for the next appointment. And, and it's basically red, amber, green. And so you can have your internal policy about what equates to a red, amber and green, and that's fine. I mean, it's not going to be possible to have one that everyone agrees on who uses open eyes, but you have uh, the ability to stratify them. So when you choose a follow up, you have three different categories uh, around the risk of delayed follow up for the next appointment. And this is useful because when they come back for um, their next appointment, if there's a reason to reschedule them, when you're looking at the clinic lists, they will have, when they're filled in, these these icons that are grey will be colour coded according to their last appointment. So it'll be red, amber, green, and it will allow you to to reschedule the green ones and keep the red ones if you need to at short notice. Um, and then they, these are also then accessible for the audits to see, you know, which are the red patients and things. So the the answer is yeah, you know, you would have your internal um, protocols according to what equates a high risk glaucoma patient, medical retina patient, what's a complex cataract, that's all, you know, your internal policy. And then there's a way to record it on on here that's structured and and, and clear. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any other questions in the room? Any other comments? <laughs> or anything online? Anyone online want to add? Ask a question? If not, we're move out there. What about the annotation, uh, Jan? Uh, it's a good point to demonstrate quickly. Which one is that, sorry? The annotation where you can draw uh, documents. Freehand drawing. The freehand yeah. drawing. Yeah. So there's um, a, a relatively new feature uh, where you can upload, for instance, if you have a really, really specific template or whatever protocol that you really like to use and you want to have it digitized you can upload it um, as a um, template and then incorporate that to your examination so i'm not sure what's been set up here but um, you can have a diagram that you set up and then use some of the software to annotate it um, that is you know freehand drawing on here labels and things like that so it just allows you some flexibility so one of the things that might be useful is like ROP screening. There isn't a, a, a proper ROP diagram that you can use, but you can upload your own one and use it in a, in a way to do freehand drawing. And the same for other stuff. Um, you can incorporate pictures and things like that into here. Yeah, I had a, another request if I can just ask that. Um, the templates and graphic examples used in more fields uh, electrophysiology are they available for sharing i've no idea <laughs> how would one go about asking that question who who would who would you ask whoever owns the 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 ip for it if it's a moorfields protocol i suppose you'd have to um speak with the department there right okay but you know you, you know anything you, you you can add anything on here um it's just whether you're allowed to use it or not i mean it's just a file you can put whatever file that you've hand drawn or copied from the internet on there but it's it's you know your your choice whether it's copyrighted or not so i guess that's a question for more fields to find out whether they would be willing to share their um templates and graphic examples yeah i mean generally everyone who's you know using this is in a community and happy to share you know there's lots of um help that different people can provide and and do share a lot of stuff so it's 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 quite helpful for like trust coming on board to have contacts in places that are using it and go visit and and see how it's used and and how they went through their implementation journey and that's usually very helpful yeah okay and i understand i've had a note just to say this um the question has been asked of more fields as well regarding those templates uh, there's another question around uh, on access can it be configured so consultants can only view the patients assigned to them yeah uh, so there are um, user rights across each profile, so you can have different levels of access to everything. So some um, staff may have only view access to view records, some may have higher access to edit, some might have access to do op notes, but you can basically assign different levels of access. Um, and then usually the clinics are 
set up according to clinic codes that come through the, the main patient's um, access system. So if they have a consultant clinic code, they will all be grouped together on here. Um, within those clinics, you can actually assign different patients to different staff. So um, you can click a, a few patients and assign them to any user. Uh, so we can sign, assign this patient to Michael, these two patients to Michael Morgan, and then they've got their initials on here. And you could do that to uh, any group of patients, but they're usually grouped according to consultant clinics. Um, and they can be, you can set customized views that you have favorites for. So you can have lists for specific days, specific hospitals that you can open up with just um, from your favorite section on here, and it would display them on here. Um, it, it, it has to be very flexible because you can imagine the amount of clinics that are running simultaneously at more fields. There's no point loading 600 patients on here, so you, you would have it configured to what suits you. Um, this is a test one, so it doesn't look exactly the same in terms of clinic codes. Thank you. There was a question about what client specifications to run the software, and effectively that's a Chrome web browser. Um, yeah. So it's very straightforward. I don't think there's a criteria. And that's one sort of slightly underestimated benefit. Um, you know, a lot of old software runs and applications where you click on an icon in Windows, wait two or three minutes, it loads up. Um, that requires a lot more device power than a browser, which basically just shows text and graphics and everything else is done on a very powerful server. And your, your limiting speed is basically your internet connection. You don't require a really powerful device, which is why you can run it on any tablet, phone, whatever, it, it, you know, and also the other benefit around that is when things need to be updated, you don't have to update 50, 100, 200 computers individually. It's just the server that's updated. And when you log in, everyone logs into the updated version. So there's lots of benefits around that, that probably not understood until you kind of start using it and realizing. There's a question about work stream for Oculastics, including templates for clinical recording and operative findings? Yeah, so for, for ocular plastics, there are a few new features around that are um, there as structured examination uh, recording. I'll show you some. So there's, there's, there's one there for, uh, for lids, for surgical and medical lids. And there are new ones around um, uh, uh, there's a new lacrimal one as well so you can record uh, syringing and probing in the examination here there's a lid one where you can record record lid position lid mal positions um, and then there's a, a quite freehand one where you can draw uh, lid lesions and other pathology on there Thank you. Uh, Sam, if you if maybe you could just check, Sam, is there anything that's been missed? Any questions not answered? There still, Sam? And Ian, while we're waiting for that, just to, we were talking about BCCs earlier. So say for a plastics clinic, that would appear as a little icon if someone took a photograph and uploaded it to that yeah. record. Yeah. So like on here, um, there's a photograph. I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> it will load up. Um, here we go. So it's just a, a screenshot of whatever, but you can upload photographs and they appear as separate events on here and you can annotate them or whatever you like. Um, so that's an easy way of doing uh, stuff that if you use a tablet, for instance, it's, it's quite nice because you can launch the camera for um, of the tab of the tablet from within open eyes, take the picture and then it saves it directly into it. And a phone obviously would do the same. Okay, we've covered a lot of things there. So thank you all for your patience. Uh, just to say, uh, Paul and I, our job, our role in this is to help get open eyes into hospitals, into uh, organisations. So that's that's what we're here to do. And there's a, as you can see, there's, there's a great community, a great team. People work together. The software is community-based software. So it's the clinicians, the specialists, who input to the software and it's designed by those specialists. So anyone here who starts using open eyes there are if you're particularly interested you can input your ideas into this software and work through the design authority it might be your ideas can get put into there but that's part of the basis of this software that's how it keeps evolving and it works around the, the, the
processes of care that you guys give. Yes, yes what please. support do you provide? So let's just say Monday morning, mm. you've logged in for some reason, you can't log in or there's some problem. Mm -hmm. Do we, can we pick up the phone to you yes. and say, right, this is what's happening? Yes. Absolutely. There's, there's different levels of support. Now, what we will generally do is augment your team. So some organisations have their own IT team, some don't, some have user uh, super users who know all about the software and you, you're better off going to them. We can provide the first level, second or the third level. So we'll work that out with you and it does depend on who you have on your team and what's most effective. But whatever it is, we, we can build that around around what you need. Right, well, I think we need to call it there. So thank you very much for hosting us. Thank Thanks for being some patient with the sound as well. And uh, to see you again. Yeah, thank, thank you very much for coming. All right, no problem at all. Right, thank you all online as well.